I'm your host for the day, Sarah Schallenberger from H22 Ministries, where we are about the purpose of God, the plan of God, and the power of God for your life and for mine as well. We are pleased to be broadcasting here at 2626 South Loop West. That is at uh, Kingdom Broadcasting Network under our founder, Apostle Joshua Mitchell. And so if you have not already watched our flagship show, Glory Live, hosted by uh, Dr. Mitchell, we invite you to do that. We also have a wonderful lineup of many broadcasters across the whole Christian experience. We have Dr. Deborah DeGauer with the Voice of God. We have Dr. Sugar Trask with Something Good is going to happen. We have Adam Glasner with Revival Fire. We have Ken and Mary Bostrom, wonderful teaching ministries. Dr. Larry Cook, wonderful breakthrough and deliverance ministry in our Texas prisons and uh, many more. So just go on to the website, KBNTV Dot TV channel one and uh, join to some of uh, our get involved in that lineup. So victory in the word. We are pleased to be with you today and we are Facebooking live. We Facebook live around one o'clock on Wednesdays. We would love to have you in our live studio audience and our segments air on Sunday nights, on Monday nights and on Wednesday nights at 8.30. And so if you miss it the first time or if you catch a particular topic of a show and you say, ooh, Sally Sue needs to hear this. Oh, this is what I've been trying to talk to Joe Bob about. You can alert them and any of our shows can be, pre can be watched again that you have seen on Facebook Live Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday. And then they are all cataloged and they are all on Sarah Schallenberger YouTube. You can catch them there. They're also on my Facebook timeline, Victory in the Word. I have its own Facebook page. And then you can also catch them. They will eventually be downloaded on the KBNTV.TV channel one website. So multiple places where you can catch the word. And remember, these segments are designed for you. This is the living word of God. Never goes out of style. So you can be in any country. You can be in uh, Kenya or Africa or the United States. And this word uh, can breathe life into the situation that you are in. And so you can be young. You can be old. The word works. And so we want to be about the business of the word, preaching the word, teaching the word, speaking the word, doing the word, acting on the word. So we're in the middle of 2019. We're just starting. Our, we've got our new resource called Design Your New Year 2019. That will have a its brand new cover that I do not have a copy of today, but will be up on that h22.org website. And so we would invite you to go ahead and to, to place a couple orders for those, get some for you, the people in your household. If you have children, this is a good resource. It's practical. It's simple. It contains lists of not only talking about why we want to be speaking the Word of God, but it has about 10 pages of Bible verses all um, organized and category by healing, by prosperity, overcoming identity in Christ. And so it's an easy tool to carry with you. It's not very thick. It's not very heavy. You can keep one in your car. You can give one to your, your student that's going off to college, one to, your, uh, one to your spouse to take in his office. So the word is right there. And it's a good resource to just be, uh, it gives you the ability to just turn that page open and start speaking that word when you have five or 10 minutes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a new creation in Christ. Everything, I, uh, everything about me, old, old about me is gone. Everything new about me is coming down true. You know, one of the one of the the strategies the Lord gave me, and I got from the book of Daniel. He had a major amount of responsibilities, and he had in the natural not a lot of help around him. He had three other com comrades that were dedicated unto the Lord. This is Daniel in Babylon. And so he was very dependent. He had this much responsibility. He had this much help in the natural. So he was this dependent on the Lord. And so you take the principle that the Lord gave him, and you can apply it to our lives. Daniel worshiped and was in front of the Lord, communicating with him three times a day. In the morning, he took a break at lunch, and then again at nighttime. And if you are going through a difficult time in your life, there's multiple tri trials or challenges, or if you're starting a brand new year like 2019 and you want to make this year the strongest year ever, then I encourage you to do what Daniel did. And that is to start your day off by opening up the word and speaking that word, getting about 15 minutes of a hot, this is who I am in Christ. I'm the healed of God. I have abundant prosperity. I have no lack. Getting that faith out of your mouth, into your ears, and setting the tone of your heart, setting the direction of your day first thing. 
Then you go about your business, feel spirit-led in the morning. And then if you have been depleted or you're starting to feel a little off track, you stop at lunchtime, you go back to the Word, and you continue to speak those same verses. I can do all things. Uh, there's no weapon that forms against me that prospers. Uh, there's nothing impossible for me with God. You do that at lunch. You refuel your spirit and your mind. You get it plumb line back on the truth of God. And then you do it again before you go to, to bed. Why do you do that? Why do you do that? Because again, the word is our plumb line. And to the degree that our mind is being renewed by the word and we have our thoughts, our daily thought patterns patterned off of the word is the degree that we'll have success in our thinking. It's a degree that we'll be able to take every thought captive. It's just like being able to, and to take part of the success of taking every thought captive and being able to recognize a negative thought, a thought that's not, that's contrary to the word, is to purposefully get the word coming out of your mouth regularly so you're training your ears, your spirit, and your heart, everything about you in your mind, to literally hear the standard of the word to literally hear it over and over and over again so that you are continually able to catch and to plumb line your thoughts, your thoughts as you go through the day. Remember, the Holy Spirit's the guard on our heart. He doesn't speak to our mind. He speaks to our heart. So when you're praying in the Spirit every day, you're keeping your heart close to the purposes of God. You're keeping your heart right. But to keep your mind right, you got to use the Word to do that. The Word's given to renew our minds. And to keep our minds plumb line to the Word consistently, and especially, again, if you're going through a challenging time, significant trials, or if you're really having to revamp uh, an anxious thought pattern, you're going to need to be speaking the word more than one time a day. You want to be doing it morning, noon, and in the evening. A good reason, again, is you do it in, the, in the, after, the morning time. It sets the tone. It gets your mind going in a certain direction. In the, in the noon time is a revival. It gives you refreshment. It kind of helps pull off all of the things that have gone right or wrong in the morning. And then in the evening time, you want to come back to the Word because that's what's going to do two things. One, it'll wash off of you the things that were not of God during the day. And two, and this is important, it'll set you up for being Word-centered before you go to bed. And that's important because our spirits are alive while we're sleeping. And the Lord still, remember, He's about redeeming the time. And so He's going to be speaking and ministering to us in our spirits during the night. And so to the degree that we have set the word in front of us before we go to bed and our heart and our mind is on the word, science even says that the things that you think about in the last five to ten minutes before you go to, the, to bed to sleep at night will be going through your, your mind or your spirit about seven times during the night. And we know that's true. And the Bible talks a lot about keeping ourselves centered on the word day and night the reason, again, we do it at night is because that gives you, sets you up. First of all, it keeps night terrors away. It, it closes the door on the enemy ministering to you. But more than that, it gives the Lord the ability to minister to you through dreams and visions. And even if you're not consciously waking up and remembering them, the we know by the word that he has, that, that is what he's done during the night. And so a lot of times what you'll find is he'll be planting things in you during, in those night hours. And, you know, you'll actually be walking through a lot of the stuff that he's prepared for you. He's getting your spirit ready. And when you wake up in the morning, you might not remember it, but 10 years down the road when you're at this crusade or that crusade or you're on this airplane, you go and, you're, and all of a sudden that dream kicks in. You're like, oh, I've already been here. Oh, I've already seen this. Oh, the Holy Spirit already walked me through this. And there's a certain element of preparation that's already been done in your spirit. And there's just a certain um, aware of familiarity. You know what, you know what um, preparation is a better way to say it. You're prepared. Your spirit's been prepared. And a lot of times that happens in the night. So give God the opportunity to do that. If you're stuck on something, a dilemma, you know, and, and you've spent the day in the Word and you've prayed in the spirit before you go to bed, you can expect an answer to come to you during the night. Uh, this is one of my favorite books, Healing, came about this way. I had all of my notes for this book done, and I didn't know how to organize it. This was one of the first. It wasn't the first, but it was the second book that I put together. And so it was one night in a dream in the night. As I was, It was the last dream cycle I had as I woke up. I saw the table of contents for this, and I saw the organization of this, 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 this. 
I woke up, I got my pencil, my paper, I wrote down, this is how the book's going to be organized, and I just went to my laptop, and I put it in this, how this book came, how the organization came. And so lots of things the Lord can do to solve problems for us. He's, he's a solution. He's a problem solver. And uh, he wants to impart all of the blessing and all of the solutions that he has for you. So, again, you're getting the word in you and you're speaking it. You're building it up day, noon, and night. So, that'll also go a long way. And that's our segue here. We're finishing up this segment on overcoming fear. So, if you were going to talk about three uh, very concrete things that you can start either adapting for the first time in 2019 or you can just add to to just keep that door closed to fear. You want to keep them under your feet. And so we're on the last three here. So first of all, uh, we've talked about the one we just talked about is being proactive with your words. And that is to be speaking proactively God's word. Because if you're focused, you, you know, we are single focused people. Our hearts are designed to be focused on one thing. Our minds are designed to focus on one thing at a time. And so if your mind is filled with the word and your mouth is filled with the word, guess what? There's not time for the enemy to come in with fearful thoughts. So your first line of defense is going to be to fill your mind and your mouth with the word. And that's what we talked about. You get a resource like this in your hand and you set aside time in the morning first thing, sometime in the middle of the day, and then before you go to bed to be speaking the word. The other thing about that is that the word never changes. So you can wake up on 2019, January 4th, let's say, and say, there's nothing impossible for me with God, Luke 137. And that you can apply that verse to everything that you're dealing with on January 4th, 2019. But then let's say it's February 10th and you have a new set of challenges and there's different things you're dealing with. Maybe you're in the business world, so maybe you're a realtor and so now you have different deals you're working on. You still want to be speaking that same verse because that same verse still applies on February 10th that there's nothing impossible for me with God. You know, those Luke 137, those catch-all phrases, there's nothing impossible for me. I can do all things through Christ, Philippians 4.13. God supplies all my needs, Philippians 4.19. I'm already more than a conqueror. God turns all things to my good because I love him and I'm called according to his purpose. Those all verses, that's Romans 8.28. Those all verses you want to be speaking daily because those are the verses that are true today. They'll be true tomorrow and they'll be the true the day. They're plumb line verses. They're foundational. They are for every day, every situation, every hour, every continent, every location you're in, every town, every city, every airplane flight that you are on, every person that you're speaking to, those verses apply. And so again, the word is settled. It never changes. It's eternal. It's outside of the time realm. So you can speak those verses in the now, today, tomorrow, and the next day, and they're always up and running. They're always relevant. They're always alive. They're always true. And so speaking in faith. So when we're speaking God's word, we're speaking in the now because the Bible says that faith is now evidence of things that might not be seen yet, that's a substance of things not seen, evidence, it's evidence of things not yet seen. And so faith is now. Today, my faith is that I am the healed of God. So you get your verses and you start speaking them in the now. When you're dealing with fear, fear can come from something that's in the past, something trauma has already happened, or, and so you think, oh, at one point, somebody, there was a crime done against me. And so there was one point in my life where I was not safe or protected. Well, the word says that's a good reason why you want to combat that by speaking in the now. Right now, who I am, I am blessed and protected. I have Psalms 91. The angels of the Lord are around me. They encamp around me. The Lord is my shelter. The Most High is my dwelling place. Therefore, no harm comes to me today, now. No harm comes near my tent. You give your angels charge over me. They guard me in 
all my ways. Psalm 91. Speaking that in the now says, right now, for today, and this is regardless of the past, regardless of what's going on, maybe 10,000 might be following at your right, 10,000 might be following your left. For today, right now, I am safe. I am blessed. I am protected. The Lord is my refuge. The Most High is my dwelling place. No harm comes to me today. No harm can come anywhere near my tent. You are giving active commands to your angels to guard me in all my ways today on the highway. When it's good weather, when it's bad weather, when there's crazy drivers, when there's people on their telephones on the, on the driving, when whatever the situation is, the most high is my dwelling place, that you're actively giving your angels commands to guard me in all of my ways. Speaking in the now keeps you in faith now and keeps fear that you might have had in the past or because of the past off of you. The other, the other part to speaking in the now is a big element of fear or anxiety. Is, so we talked about if you have had trauma or fear in the past, that's one reason you speak in the now because it'll separate you from the past. The other reason is because there's an element of stress or fear that you're looking up ahead, you're looking at the future, and you are anticipating something negative. So it hasn't happened yet. You haven't taken that class in college yet. You haven't met that new roommate yet. You haven't um, um, asked to have a promotion from your boss yet. Those are things that are in your future. You, you're anticipating doing them. But because they haven't happened yet, if you have a, a tendency, you want to keep fear off of them. If it hasn't happened yet, it's still within your call. You still get to decide how that thing goes. You get to rule and reign by your words. And so you get to speak ahead and put the Bible and put those Bible verses ahead to what hasn't happened yet. That's how you move out of this idea of, oh, no, this is going to come upon. This is, this is, I have an interview with my boss for a promotion. Oh, no, I haven't done it yet. It's going to be bad. I'm going to fail. I'm not going to know what to say. I'm going to be nervous. I won't get the promotion. Those are negative thoughts, not based on truth. The Bible says that's not true. The Bible says everything you put your hand to prospers, that you walk every day in an increased amount of favor with God and with man. So those thoughts are not lined up with the word. And those things have not happened yet. So you are trying, you are starting to have a thinking pattern and emotions based on something that's not true about you. And it hasn't happened yet. And so you break that by taking the truth of God and by putting it out ahead and by saying, when I go to that interview, the by Jesus is with me. The Prince of Peace walks ahead of me. He's a good shepherd. He walks into the room first. He brings his peace, and I walk right into that peace, and I sit next to him. Jesus is with me in that interview. The word says that the Lord opens my mouth. No man can shut. He shuts my mouth. No man can open. So he'll fill my mouth when during that interview with what I need to say to my boss. The word says that every day I'm growing in favor with God and with man, so I expect I believe and receive favor for that promotion in the name of Jesus. The Bible says because I'm a son or a daughter, I'm led by the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's going to help me during that interview, and he's going to tell me what to say, and he's going to give me good success. And so you start applying the word to something that hasn't happened yet. This is going to be easy. If it seems like it's something that's difficult, you're like, I don't know how it's going to work out, you put Isaiah 43, 19. This is a situation where there seems to be no way, but God's going to make a way. So you're speaking ahead in faith. You're purposely speaking in the now. According to the word, I am healed today. I have prosperity today. I am an overcomer today. Even before I, my foot goes out of the chute, before I even one step, I'm already an overcomer. I already have, I already walk on top of serpents and scorpions over all part of the earth. And then you're speaking ahead according to the word. And then you actively, as you do, this needs to be a lifestyle. That you build a foundation, a lifestyle. And remember, you know, the second birth is designed to separate us from anything you walked in, you inherited from your natural family. And so if you come from a family line that has a history of anxiety or depression, anxious thought patterns, people that are on edge, type A personalities, you know, different ways you can say that. 
then you're going to need to build up purposely a foundation of peace and faith and confidence in the word and being led by the spirit. And the spirit's going to put the perfect timing in your thinking and your speaking and your action. He's not going to have you go so fast that you're going to make mistakes and he's not going to let you lag behind so that you're missing things. So the timing, you can trust the timing of the Holy Spirit. And so this is, these are all things that need to be, we're continually building in 2019 that shuts the door on fear, stress, whatever the level is, anxiety. Remember, you need to repent of stress, not medicate stress. We repent of the attitude of being self-centered and repent and put our dependence on the Lord instead of medicate. Even if you've had trauma and terror, there's a way to be healed, and we'll talk more about in other segments. There's supernatural power, the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Ephesians 3 is all-surpassing, and he can, his power is given to us to separate us from anything that's come against us. That's why we're not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God to separate us from anything that's come against us, Romans 1.16. And so even if you've had terror, even if you've had long-standing terror, even if that trauma happened in your child, your formative years, and so your brain literally, your brain chemistry and everything about your thinking pattern was de developed in this fearful atmosphere, and so you really, this fearful thinking pattern has a grip on you, you, the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Word is strong enough to break the stronghold in your mind and to break the spirit of fear off of you and to put into you a, a spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is love, power, and a sound mind that doesn't have racing thoughts. A sound mind doesn't have negative thoughts. A sound mind thinks and speaks according to the mind of Christ, has the mind of Christ. And so this is even for those, any level that you're dealing with on fear in 2019, you have been given tools and we'll continue teaching and administering them out until every last person that wants to be free from fear is free from fear because that's not your inheritance from the Lord. It's love, it's power, it's a sound mind, it's, it's, uh, it's peace. It's your, you get to walk in peace that passes understanding. And then this last part here is another practical tip of telling fear to go. And again, this is part of our identity as the authority of a believer. And this is not the authority that comes with a five-fold ministry gift that you see in Ephesians 4, which was the pastor, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, or the teacher gift. This is the authority that blessedly and gratefully has been given to every believer. And every believer has the ability and needs to be using their ability to raise their voice and to speak directly to anything in the unseen realm that the enemy is trying to do and tell it to go in Jesus' name. So our words are the only thing about us that impact both the seen realm and the unseen realm. Words are sound, and they are both wave and particle. And so that means they go real places, and they carry real substance. They're real. That's why Jesus could speak to a fig tree, curse it at the root, and the tree responded, and the, and the, and the roots withered, and the tree died. It was sound. It was real real direction, real power, real, real command. You will not do this again, hitting those roots receiving that curse on them and the tree responding. Words are real. And so they, can, they hit and they impact the natural realm. They also are the only thing we have that also impacts the unseen realm. The unseen realm is the Bible way of saying the, real, the spirit realm that is real and is around us at all times, but we don't see with our natural eyes. We can pick up on it according to the, the wisdom of the word and by our spiritual senses. And our words also touch that realm because just like God's word is spirit, our words are spirit. They come from our spirit if we're born again and they carry the very Zoe life of God, the breath of God, and they have the ability to impact the unseen. Fear is an unseen enemy. In the Old Testament, you know, when the Bible says no weapon formed against you will prosper, well, you look at the life of David. And David had many times real enemies coming at him with spears and with weapons. 
In the New Testament, most of us do not have people coming after us on a daily basis with weapons and swords and spears and this and that. But we do have words that come at us, either in our mind or from people's mouths. And those words fall into the category of unseen. They're still weapons that can form against us, but they're unseen by these eyes. And, your, and fear is one of those weapons. And so when you are thinking about, when you are getting, uh, poising yourself, positioning yourself to have overcoming victory in 2019 and to keeping that door shut to fear and anxiety and stress, you will need to adapt this idea of here's fear. If you start picking up on its presence in your spirit, you need to separate yourself, picture it in front of you as an entity and speak directly to it and say, fear, you get off of me in the name of Jesus. You can speak to fear, and you need to speak to fear. Spear, fear, just like the Bible says, we're not given a what? Spirit of fear. Well, fear has ears, and fear can hear your voice, and fear does hear your voice, and has to do what you tell it to do in Jesus' name. And so if it's in your life, if it's in your mind, if it's in your heart, if it's in your circumstance, you as a believer have authority to speak directly to it and to say, go in the name of Jesus. Fear of lack, go in the name of Jesus. My God says he supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19, you tell that fear to go and then you throw a rock at it. You throw a Bible verse at it. No, uh, you, um, we'll talk about in this next uh, fear of, fear of, of cancer go in the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus and the power of the cross has separated me from my family inheritance cancer is rebuked off of me and my family line in Jesus name can't form in me can't form in anybody in my descendant line in the name of Jesus and you tell that fear to go and then you follow up with the word I am the healed of God I have long life I have strength and I have health no sickness no disease can live on the inside of me. And so it's telling fear to go and then, put, and then putting the word to that. So learning to walk in that. Part of it is catching that fear. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. He'll help you to do that. As you plumb line your thinking and speaking the word during the day, it'll be easier and easier to catch even the smallest little tinge of anxiety. And when you do, you want to be addressing that quickly and then feeding and keeping yourself in the presence of God. And so we'll talk a little bit more in our next segments, again, about keeping out fear, bit, bit really bringing, bringing a victory into every believer's life this year for 2019 and living in victory, victory that comes from the word.